So in traveling waves, many different types of system that exhibit this behavior can be described by that traveling wave function that we talked about in the last example. But depending on what type of system, one certain parameter, the wave speed, depends on properties of the system themselves. Very similar to your simple harmonic motion case where we have omega is equal to different things for say the spring mass system versus the pendulum system. In our case, we looked at in particular waves on a string. So if you have a string and you pluck it, it moves up and down. This up and down motion travels sideways on the string and the speed of this wave, how fast this propagates on the string, it's related to the tension in the string divided by this thing called mu. It's the linear mass density, which is your mass, not divided by volume, but just divided by the length. So to find the speed of the wave is actually quite simple. First thing to notice here, piano strings are under a tremendous amount of tension, thousand newtons for a tiny little string like that. So if you remember cartoons when you drop a piano onto any cartoon characters and the structure of the piano collapses, all this tension within the string really makes the whole piano basically implode. And that's also why the piano has to be built so heavy because it needs to support that amount of tension, not just by the one string, but the many, many strings within the piano itself. Punching in the numbers, and that's the wave speed. To find the wavelength, we know that that is true. So to find the wavelength, you take the speed and divide by the frequency. Presumably this is in hertz, which is per second, end up with meters for your unit for wavelength, which makes sense. And this length is actually very much related to the length of the string that plays that particular note. And we'll be looking at that next week. A little bit bonus, thinking about what happens when this piano does play a sound, right? You have a string here that gets plugged and vibrates back and forth, right? Technically, though, the wave propagates back and forth in here. We'll talk about that all next week, but that makes a sound, right? That travels out like that. When you have different mediums interacting, in the different medium, your wave speed changes because it's governed by different types of physics in the air. You can't talk about tension and linear mass density. It's based on a whole variety of other physics. But what you do know is that in between all these different medium, your frequency stays the same because for one vibration that happens on the string, you get one vibration in the air. We'll become a little more intimate with this particular number next chapter, but for the speed of sound in the air at 20 degrees, because it does vary a little bit with temperature, it's 343 meters per second. So different speed, same frequency means different wavelength as well. So just a little bonus to talk about what happens when you have waves kind of passing from one medium to another that you would have a different speed but maintain the same frequency.